to the, you might have a seat right over there. You watch the dad sitting right here. I appreciate you coming. Here. Start out last time. My mom's here offered. You've probably met me before. I don't know if I've ever stopped or anything, but you've probably seen me. I've seen you around. Uh, well, first of all, I'm going to start out reading you your rights. Okay. The door's unlocked at any point, point you don't want to talk to me, you can get up and walk over here and we'll be in. Okay. Yeah. You have the right to remain silent. Any statement you make can be used as evidence against you in court. You have the right to consult with a lawyer before answering any questions and the right to have your lawyer present during the questioning. If you cannot afford a lawyer, one will be appointed for you without cost to you prior to questioning if you so desire. If you wish to answer questions now without a lawyer present, you have the right to stop answering at any time. Okay. You understand all that? <clears throat> it says uh, right here, it says I have read or have read to me my constitutional rights and I fully understand them. If you understand them, I want you to sign right there, the date and the time. Okay. Next paragraph is if you want to talk to me, I hereby waive my rights and I'm willing to talk to you now. No promises or threats have been made to me and no pressure or force of any kind has been used against me. I've all this is, waived my rights. This is if you want to talk to me. Instead of having a lawyer present? Yeah. Well, why? Because I've seen probably feel better with a lawyer. Well, we ain't got one. No, no, no. We know you're innocent, so. Yeah. Your up. I'm not going to influence you in any way. Yeah. Whatever you decide, that's what you want to do. Should we see what you need to I ain't got the money for them. Yeah. I'm just going to answer questions. I mean, at any point you don't want to answer or you're done, you just say I'm done and we you know. on the phone. <coughs> the young ladies come up here and accuse you of breaking her. Uh, I'm just needing to get some information from you or hear your side of it or, or whatever you want to say to me. Uh, I don't know why because I mean I dated her you know I was you know because it all started out you know I was over visiting with my brother over at the blue house and you know her and her mom were out there and we were talking well finally one day I get a phone call, it's like, hey Wayne, you wanna help out my neighbor? I was like, yeah, sure. And I went over and talked to the neighbor and had to get up early, like on a Saturday or something like that, and then go out to Springdale and help them with the car, help them find a car. And I went and test drove cars for them, you know, helped them out, I had to drive one of them back from Springdale. And we drove, me and Kelsey rode in the car together and Came back from Springdale, and her mom was like right behind us the entire time. So, I mean, you know, she called me and she's like, Hey, pull over to the gas station, the cars are eating. We pulled over, and you know, we sat there for a while, threw in some oil, and got a few drinks, and we took off down the road. And we came back to town, and as soon as we got back, I would start heading towards my car. And they're like, Hey, if you want to come back and hang out and watch the movie sometime, come on over. I was like, All right. So, I just went home and went to sleep for a while because I was, I got like two hours of sleep the night before. I was dead tired. So, you know, I started going over there. Me and Kelsey started dating. And then all of a sudden, you know, her mom's like, hey, you know, I don't want you to see my daughter anymore. I was like, all right, no problem. You know, and I, I left it at that. I'm just like, all right, cool. And I just left. 
And I was like, all right. And I just kept, you know, just keeping to myself, keeping to my friends. And finally, one day, Kelsey texts me. I'm like, okay, cool. Let's go. Hey, what's up? You know? And, you know, we sat there and texted every now and again. You know, she'd call me. And I don't know. Then the next thing I know is freaking, I was working. I was out on smoke break. And she came over to my job. And she saw me outside. And she came out over to me. And she was all hugging up on me, and I was like, oh, hold up, hold up, hold up, what about, you know, I was like, hey, dude, your mom said no contact, you know, <laughs> this ain't supposed to be happening, you know, don't, and then I guess her mom saw her on me and freaking, her mom left and came back later with the 12 gauge in her car, yeah. and was giving me terroristic threatening sand, that I need to stay away from her daughter, which I have been, and if I don't stay away from her daughter, that you ain't got to worry about nobody find my DNA because she's going to blow my shit up, and that's exactly what she said. Okay. And I was like, okay, <laughs> and I just walked back in. I was like, all right, and I sat there trying to just fathom what happened. You know, I was like, wow, she had a freaking shotgun in the car, and I could have gotten shot at work, mm -hmm. my first night of work, and I could have gotten shot at work because of her going off a rocker. And I was like, man, ever since then, I deleted her number, haven't even tried in contact or nothing. Mm -hmm. Everything's been just dead. You got to tell, you called douche, douche room. Call yeah, them, I, called, I called after a while. Mm -hmm. You know, after a little while of sitting there trying to figure out what just happened, I called for, Officer Pearson, but they sent Dishroom because Dishroom was on duty, and he came up and I filled out uh, a statement, and a coworker of mine filled out a statement. Mm -hmm. Don't the statement. Yeah, and then he said we'll keep in touch. And so just to let you know on that part, there's a affidavit down here at the, for, for the prosecutor right now to arrest her on that. Okay. And then, because uh, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of scary. Because I mean, I'm afraid to walk down the street or even ride my bicycle anymore. Because every now and then I'm looking over my shoulder because I'm still spooked. You know, she had a shotgun in the car and was threatening me. I'm scared. I'm not even joking. I'm worried. Now tell them what happened after Dish Room went back over to their house. Uh, after Dishroom went over to their house and after I started, you know, pressing charges, next thing I know is this rape charge is being thrown towards me. And I'm but, like... Uh, but the whole night, Kelsey well, kept calling you. Yeah, Kelsey called me like three times and I was like... Four. Uh, I didn't keep count. She kept calling you to... Drop charges, yeah, drop she was charges. trying to get me to drop charges. And you said, all, all, right. all I'm, I'm going to do, I'm like, all I'm going to do is get a restraining, restraining order. order. And then I was like, because I wasn't going to tell you. Um, Ms. Parker, mm -hmm. can I talk to you for a second real quick, sir? I had something I wanted to uh, talk to you about real quick, if you don't mind, sir. Who are you? Okay. Anyway. Uh, it, uh. Let me thank you. At any point, you said you dated Kelsey. Yeah, what, for like weeks? a week, okay. like a week, if that. At any point, did you no, sleep and, with her? No, no, okay. no, because I have way too much respect for her dad. Cause my brother worked with her dad, and so I was like, all right, you know, he he trusted me enough to drive his vehicle. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to go and break some enough to drive his vehicle. You know, I'm not going to go and break some trust like that. I was raised right. I was raised to be a gentleman. I mean, I held her hand and kissed her, and that's about it. You know, we hugged every now and again, but that was it. Okay. At any point that she uh, called you to get her come over to her house uh, while her mom was asleep after her mom had told you, you know? No, her mom told me I was, you know, welcome. You know, but I mean, after her, her, at some point, her mom stopped liking you for whatever reason. No, she never... Called me over or nothing. You never went over there? No. Okay. no, sir. I never went over there. You know, it's like I'm not supposed to be talking to you, but you know, you text me, I'll text back just because I'm a nice guy like that. You know, if somebody texts me, I return text. 
and we should have a courtesy. Uh, we know, I mean, I know for a week, so there, there, you know, there was some, apparently, some tension there. I mean, Kelsey must have been talking to you, obviously, she's going to Burger King and Mom's yeah. quite happy and, and everything else. Yeah. Uh, but you said you never... No, sir, I've never touched her sexually in any way, shape, or form. Okay. Never. Uh, we uh, recovered the underwear and stuff that she had on that night. Okay. okay. Uh, we know through a medical exam that she did have sex with somebody. Okay. Okay. Uh, will your DNA be in those underwear? I doubt it. I seriously doubt it. Uh, well, if uh, you said you've never slept with her, so they wouldn't have been there. No. I never touched her or anything like that. So if you did, it won't be there, right? Exactly. Do uh, uh, you think this is all made up because... Pretty much because I'm pressing charges on her mom. She's coming in to screen rape because she's trying to protect her mom. Okay. That's what I think it is. Uh, have you had any contact with them since Wednesday? No. Nope. I haven't had any contact with them since this whole ordeal. Uh, the last time you talked to Kelsey was... The night that the night of murder. Yeah. That was the last time. But, okay. Did you ever ever go over to her house? I mean, yeah, I know you said you did originally. I mean, her mom had invited yeah, you. Yeah, her mom invited me over, and I went what? over a few times and watched movies. Uh, just sitting in a little Yeah, just sat on the couch and watched movies. Have you made any statements around town to any of your friends or anything about sleeping with her? No. Uh, no. You said anything to your brother about it? No. But he'd be tend to, to make up stuff? My brother? Yeah. No. Uh, My brother would be as honest as I am. Uh, you sure he hasn't said nothing? Yeah. Okay. And, uh, Nobody you work with would say? Uh-uh. Okay. Uh, who old do you hang around with? I know. Um, Ed Evans is a friend of mine that I go out and I go to Green Forest to see, like, all the time. Uh, Wayne Lanningham, I go to Eureka and go see him every now and again. I got my friend Kelly, who also lives in Green Forest. I see you driving up down the road every morning. Yeah, I'm always, I'm always bouncing from Green Forest, Berryville, from Berryville to... To be your I've never paid enough attention to you to, to even notice who you is with. Um, yeah. Yeah, which is generally a good thing for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'm just, I'm always running. Just always, constantly. Right. You know, I'm never home. So I don't know how I'd find time to do this, you know, it's, I'm never there. Okay. Well, I've been told by them uh, that you may say this, that you walk around the houses and not go there in that neighborhood and, and things like that. I walk to Stubbs and get me a suit every now and again. Okay. You don't That's walk it. in the back of your home? No. Uh, you have to be aware of, uh, we've had a string of robberies through there. I'm, you're not a suspect in the I've heard. I've heard. And you've probably seen the officer, some of them walking through there yeah. at night. <clears throat> With flashlights, yeah. I mean, just looking at stuff, and I'm like, what is going on here at my house? I'm like, what the heck's going on? I'm just like, Without everything, the windmill down's been stolen in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, I've had my bike stolen once, back whenever I was still in school. Somebody stole my bicycle out of my backyard at night, and I woke up, my bicycle wasn't there, and it took me, I came in here, poor dude, stole it, you know, but I ended up getting it back. I found it over behind the apartment complex across from Tyson's. Yeah. Had my dad's pickup at the time, and I was like, hey, there's my bike, and I grabbed it up, threw it in the bed, and went home. Yeah, yeah I guess uh, about three weeks ago, we got a complaint, I guess your dogs got out, and uh, yeah. Or out there running around the lady yeah, across the street, so they tried to eat her or something. No, they just bark. They're still pups. Yeah. They're still pups. They're still trying to. I'm still trying to teach them their boundaries. I keep them in the garage pretty much all the time. 
because they still have to fix dog fence. As we went down there, and if we were out around them, they didn't. Dogs, they're loved. <laughs> you ain't got to worry about them dogs biting. Their bark is the only thing they got on them. Yeah. Well, they're loved dogs. I mean, all they'll do is come bark at you and you know, let you pet them and love on them. Yeah. None of my dogs are aggressive. I don't. I don't believe in aggressive animals. I really don't. You know, because I mean, my dog Buddy I had to break him because for a long time there, after I got him, he was real bad. Anybody with gloves, he. He hated gloves, and finally now it's I can put on gloves and sit there and play with them. He just looks at me like I'm stupid. <laughs> I'm like, okay. All right, why not? This is the thing that that I really need to clear up. Right. I'm not accusing you of rape anything like that. Right. But if you did sleep with her at any point, let me know. So, because if the crime lab says that your DNA is in her underwear, it's going to be really hard to defend that. So. I mean, I know your dad, but your dad's not in here right now. If you don't want to admit it from him, whatever they don't. No, I never her. slept with her. Never. No. Okay. Uh, no, I didn't do a damn thing with her. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to get that that cleared up. So. And it kind of makes me angry because I mean, I'm being called a freaking rapist here. You know, I'm not like that. I wasn't raised like that. I'm not accusing you of one way or the other. I'm just this is uh yeah. where we get these complaints. I mean. It's a, that's a, as you understand, a pretty serious yeah. charge. I mean, it isn't nothing to be joking about or whatever. Yeah. And uh, so we've got to uh, take it serious and not get on. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's not like a traffic stop or something like that. You know, this is, so we have to tie up all the loose ends on it just to make sure uh, this isn't my mother. If you didn't do it, by all means, I hope you did. You know, I don't want you in trouble. I'm not out to get you in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but, I mean, looking at it, if uh, someday you're going to have kids, whatever, if one of them, you know, it's uh, it's our obligation to follow up on such yeah, I know. And, uh, anyway, uh, do you have any problems taking a DNA test? No. Uh, it's all, all it'll consist of. It's like a swab being wiped around your mouth. Mm-hmm. You ever had that done before? No. Uh, hang back for the second All right. All right. Hey, when are you guys going? Yeah. Well, this is Detective Bartow. Um, Daniel said that uh, you said it was all right if we uh, take a sample of your DNA. <laughs> This here's a permission to search. Permission to search. Basically, it's just a consent. You've given us consent to take your DNA because basically we're, uh, it's basically considered a search since we're taking part of your property. Okay. Michael. Michael. Parker. And four by. This year says, okay. oh, read this over for me. says, I, Wayne M. Parker, have been informed by Detective Robert Bartos, myself, and Officer Crawford, uh, who made proper identification, authorized law enforcement officers of the Variable Police Department, 
of my constitutional right to have a search made of the premises and property owned by me and or under my care, custody, and control without a search warrant. Knowing of my lawful right to refuse to consent to such a search, I willfully give my permission to the above named officers to conduct a complete search of the premises and property, including all buildings and vehicles, both inside and outside, the property located at, and that's just because it's in there, on the person of the four wall swabs. The above said officers further have my permission to take from my premises and property any letters, papers, materials, or any other property or things which they desire as evidence for criminal prosecution in the case or case under investigation. This written permission to search without a search warrant is given to me to the above officers voluntarily and without uh, any that or any threats or promises of any kind at its 1410 on the 21st day of August 2008 here at the Burial Police Department. What this is saying here is it's okay with you to let us take uh, DNA swabs. If not, you have that right to refuse. Yeah. And if it's okay, then if it's okay with you, go ahead and sign there saying that it's all right. TV, so you seen the CSI and stuff. So it's just basically a cute tip right in the house. Yeah. <coughs> I never see that when I went and seen the dentist. <laughs> got a tape for me until I came up with $80 to get people. You got any gum or tobacco yeah. or nothing like that in there? Oh, uh, um, yeah. That had to hurt. No. Never even really felt it. It just felt funny when you checked the top ball and the whole thing fell through. It was kind of cool feeling. I'll just have to take your word for that. When I heard the needle hit the floor, and I was like, well, and I spazzed out for a second. I was like, okay. So the tiring didn't fall out. All right. Did you push that whole thing through there? Yeah, well, I gauged it. It was a 14. I gauged it to like a 12. seconds, so that's why I keep looking at it.
I'm gonna talk to you real quick, man, if that's all right. Man, you've grown since my thing here. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Right. Look, why not? No, you've been in a little trouble here and there, but you've basically been a good person. You've been a good kid. And that's why I looked at all the evidence that they've got here so far. That's why I'd like to think that this was something that just just kind of happened, just kind of happened by chance. It wasn't something you planned out because I don't see you going through and planning out to rape some girl. I mean, that that's just not like you. That's not the history that I've known from you. And like I said, you've been in a little trouble here, but basically you just kind of been in the wrong place at the wrong time, maybe with the wrong yeah. people and stuff. That's, that's why I think you need to do something like this. I think, you know, y'all was out there, kind of messed around. You're young. I remember being young, hormones raging. Y'all was out there kind of... I'm always bouncing from one time you know, to another. Start kissing and messing around, whatever. You get excited and them hormones start raging and stuff. And I don't know how that goes. And, you know, one little thing leads to another. And, you know, one little thing leads to another. And, bam, next thing you know, it's... You, you just can't... You know, it just happens, you know. It, thinking with the wrong head and it just kind of no, goes, goes over there. Like that. Like that. But, uh, but see, that's why I'd like to think that... See, because... I mean, I know something happened here, but what I'm trying to find out is what happened, because I think that, you know, you're not like one of them other guys, you're not Jeffrey Dahmer or any of those stuff like there. I'm thinking it's just something a chance happened, you didn't plan for nothing, you're all over there kind of messing around, things maybe went a little too far, you know, and I mean, that, that happens. I mean, young teenagers, the hormones, testosterone, I mean, it, it's roaring, start kissing, start messing around, stuff happens. That's why I'd like to think that this wasn't something that wasn't something that you planned out, just something that just kind of happened. There's nothing freaking, there's nothing that happened. Nothing that happened. You know, I, I, I've seen the medical evidence and stuff. I just wanted your DNA to compare it to the DNA that, that they've got there. And that's why I'm trying to give you the opportunity here because I know you're not like one of them like Jeffrey Dahmer, one of the people like that. You're like that. You're not like an animal. You just somebody that had something happened. You know, we just wrong time, wrong people. You know, Wayne. The only reason I'm sitting here today, I've screwed up. I've done stuff that I'm not proud of. There's a lot of stuff I'm ashamed of. Stuff that I definitely want to tell my kid when he gets older because I'm ashamed that happened to. Him. But the only reason I'm sitting here today was because I'm fessed up to it. And it's human nature not to want to admit someone screws stuff up. It's not we're ashamed of it. We're embarrassed when stuff happens bad. But the only way to take care of stuff is to fess up and say, look, I screwed up. It was an accident because I figured it was an accident. And it wasn't something that was planned. Because like I said, you're not like any of them people. I mean, if you're not, if you are like that, then I'm wasting my time here. I mean, if you think it's way too well, well I mean, that's why I'm saying, see, exactly, exactly. exactly. Well, see, you were raised to it by your parents. Uh, you know, so they care about you. Shit. You know, and that's why I'm thinking that this was just kind of a circumstantial thing. He was at the wrong place, the wrong time, the hormones were roaring and raging, you know, and when you start making out with somebody, things lead to one thing to the next, and stuff happens. That's why I want to believe that you're the good person that I thought of when you were a kid and that this is just an accident, that this is just something that just kind of happened. But that's what I need to know, because I mean, it's either one or the other. It's either A, you planned it out, or B, it just happened by accident. So. Is it? Did you plan it, or was it an accident? I didn't plan nothing. I, Nothing's ever planned with well, me. That's what I'm saying. It's not planned. You know, it was just Nothing's something that happened. Nothing's ever planned with me. I'm always lived day by day because I that's found out saying. life's easier that that's way. That's what I'm saying. Just, 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 it, just an accident. You was there. Things led to one thing to the next, and then something just happened. I'm always, you know, just like that's I what I'm trying even, to say. Like, hey, have you talked to her about this since this happened? No, I haven't had any contact with her. Do you, I have pretty much no clue what's going are, are you, on until freaking Crawford called me and said, hey, we need to talk. So, but I mean, none of this talk. stuff, you didn't plan any of this stuff no. out. No, it was just kind of something that just happened. It, it was just I kind mean, of spur of the moment just, thing. It led one thing, led to another. Is that what happened? No, I mean, it just led one thing to another. Because you just said you didn't plan it out. I mean, if you didn't plan it out, then it's just something that happened. And, and that's kind of what I need to know, if it was one or the other. 
I mean, I like to think that it was just something that just happened because, like you said, you've got a good upbringing. You've been a, a good kid. A few I times go to home, church. But, well, there you go. You know, I have my there you go. God. You know, I'm not, and, and I'm not an gonna, animal. I'm not. That's what I'm saying. No, that's that's somebody what I'm saying. Be out when there something you, you screw up and accidents happen, the first thing we do is we go to God and we say, "Look, I'm sorry for what happened." And, and that's true, though, right? You're sorry for what happened. And it's like, it, I told that's what I'm saying. Church, you go to church, and I'm good. Do so you not like them other people because they don't go to church? They don't care about God. They don't care about their religion. They don't care about their family. But I you're got different. too much stuff you, here. Exactly. You've got a lot of stuff. That stuff would. Well, that's I exactly what I'm dogs, saying. Why this stuff care just I got happens. car after fix. I got exactly. family that I that's got. That's what I'm out. saying. You're a good guy. You're not like these other guys. You've got all these things here. That's why you wouldn't find something like that. This exactly, exactly. That's why this thing just happened. It was an accident. Uh, it just spurred a moment. One thing led to another. Things went too far, and it just happened. I mean, a good Christian boy like you wouldn't plan something like this no. out, would you? No, I didn't think so. Not nobody that was raised like you. You wouldn't go out planning mm -hmm. something like that because you'd be an animal, and you're not like it. That's why this just happened. It was an accident. A lot of people look at me and think, oh, what a freak. But you know what? If well, they actually got to know me, they would actually see You see don't judge a book by the cover. You do the inside. Uh, I, I know I'm not a good Did you ask for forgiveness for what you did? Did you ask God to forgive you for this? I'm sure you have. You're a Christian. Have you asked for it? I haven't even been to church in like two weeks because I haven't been able to make it because I've been working. But you still talk to God, I'm sure. I still pray. And and still pray. Well, see, look, that's what you, you keep telling me how good of a person you are, and I agree with you fully. I know where you're coming from because you're not like them animals. You're not like one of them guys. That's why I'm saying it didn't get planned. It was just something, a spur of the moment thing. It, when things went too far, and it just happened. Am I right? It just happened. You didn't plan it. You went over there. One thing led to the next, and it happened. And afterwards, it was like, oh, crap, what did I do? I'm better than that. I'm Wayne. I was raised better than that. This didn't happen. Isn't that what happened? Is that what happened or not, Wayne? Because you're a good person. I could see afterwards you felt, what did I just do? You know, you were embarrassed, maybe humiliated a little bit, maybe ashamed because you were raised better than that. Is that? Am I wrong or am I right? Because like I said, I mean, you're... Telling me exactly what I know about you, that, that you're better than that. That's why this stuff would have just happened. I mean, things get heated, you know, and emotions, and, and especially youth, youth, them, you know, the testosterone and everything runs high, the emotions and stuff, and you throw a little bit of kissing and stuff in there with somebody you care about, and, and sometimes things just go a little bit too far. But I, I'm just trying to find out what really went on here, Wayne. And I know you're a good person, so that's why I'm trying to believe that, that it was just an accident, just something that went a little too far, things that just went. But you stopped yourself, didn't you? Didn't you stop it? When she started trying to go further, I just, yo, hold on, so check, it. stop. And I was like, all right, I don't feel comfortable. I'm going to leave. And I just left. And I went to a friend's house, sat there, and I was like, dude, give me a cigarette because I was out and I was like man I need a cigarette and I, he was like why I was like dude I just got fleet, just completely freaked out and he called me gay and I was like dude did you penetrate her no no how far did you get no I was like kissing and hugging didn't go any further no, Wayne, come on. No, it went farther than that. Be honest with me. Tell me the truth. Tell me what's really going on. Because now I'm thinking maybe that's something that was planned. But I'd like to no, think that that wasn't nothing's... true. Wayne, I, I know there was at least penetration there. There wasn't. That's what I'm trying to put out. There's no penetration. I did not penetrate this girl. I did not do anything with that girl of that sort. Come on, Wayne. You need to be honest with me. You need to be honest with yourself. You need to be honest with God about what's really going on. If you're really this good person, like I think you are, like you're telling me, are you going to be honest with me? you be honest with God and be honest with that girl is what's going on here. Because I'm on your side here, Wayne. That's why I'm not comparing you to this other guy over here that I'm talking about. I think you're over here. I mean, you're a good Christian boy. You said you go to church. You go to church when you can, which that's like a lot of us. It's hard sometimes because you got to make ends meet and try to go to the church. And I like to think that God understands well, that we're trying to do the best we can. To the church. Well, good. Good for you. That it, and if you were like this other guy, you wouldn't care. You wouldn't go there at all. But you're doing it. You're doing it. So that's why I want to know this, how far things went. I, I already know how far they went, Wayne. But I, I was also know that once it went that far, you were the one that stopped it. 
You were the one that took control of the situation. You were the one, once it started, and I know it started, you stopped it. You were the one that walked off. She wasn't able to get away from you. You stopped it and walked off, which shows you're better than that other guy because you stopped yourself. You caught yourself and said, whoa, I'm better than that. I'm not like that. I'm not an animal. And you got up and you left. But see, Wayne, if you were like that other guy, like I said, I wouldn't be here. This would be a waste of my time. It'd be a waste of your time. And, and you wouldn't even have shown up to talk to me. But you showed up. Well, I actually showed up to talk to Officer Crawford. But that's why you showed up because... You know, you want to get this taken care of. You want to get it off your chest, and you want to make it all good. No, I was just asked to come in to get asked a few questions. I was like, all right, I'll answer a few questions. But now, right now, I feel like I'm the one being interrogated, so I'm feeling really uncomfortable right now, and I'd really like to leave. Well, you're more than welcome to wait. Uh, no, no, yeah, dude, I'm not feeling comfortable without my dad. I really hate you. I'm sorry, but I don't know. Well, that's quite all right, Wayne. We're just here to try to find out.